Hey everybody, hunter, fisher, trapper, trader, guide, scout, and interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with the prettiest camera girl in the world, Pretty Miss Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Can barely see you through all this steam because I'm browning up two pounds of 80-20 burger because we're going to make ground beef stroganoff. That's right, beef stroganoff out of ground beef. Come on over here, let's get started. All right, I don't want to cook this burger to death, but because it is hamburger, it's got to reach 165 degrees internal temperature, which should be pretty easy browning it up real good. We definitely don't want any pink burger left anywhere, and as long as I got it at this stage right here, I'm going to add some seasoning to it, and I'll put all the ingredients in the description box below the video. In this little cup right here, I got a half a teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I backed it down just that a quarter of a teaspoon because we want to season up this burger while we're browning it up here. Let me get this browned up real good so I know it's cooked all the way through and be right back with you. All right, our two pounds of 80-20 burger is browned up real good here. Let me turn off my little induction cooktop cooker, which, by the way, everybody asks me all the time. That's a new wave two. It says N-U-W-A-V-E and then the number two. You can find them on Amazon. This is an older model, so I'm not sure you can find this particular model, but you can find a new wave two induction cooker that's what we use and by the way let me show you what I got going over here I got a bowl and then I got a colander on top so I'm straining out all the grease out of this burger I'm gonna set it aside and let it sit there and kinda of drain while we go to our next step so let me get all this burger in this little strainer and I'll be right back with you well, all right, we got our burger draining pretty good over here. You can see all that grease down below there. We don't want that. Now, in this pan over here, all I did was dump out the little excess, and there wasn't much because it was 80-20, and most of it followed its way over here to this little strainer. And I wiped it out with a paper towel, but I didn't wash it. I'm going to have Sheila move the camera over here. I'm going to show you our next step. All right, I'm going to do some onions and mushrooms in here, and I took a stick of butter cut it in four chunks. I'm going to start out with a half a stick of butter in there. haven't really got the pan on just yet because I want to prep my onions. And what I do, there's so many people that leave the core on and they slice this way and they go in and do that. I don't do any of that. I cut each end off of an onion. This is just the way I do it. You do it a different way, that's fine as well. And then I cut it in half and then I just peel off that outer layer and there it is. It's all ready to cut up. And I never cut towards myself. I always cut straight down so I can make my cuts away from my hand. And you don't have to cut in like this because the good Lord already put all those cuts in there in those layers of onion. So when you cut it like this, it already is in little teeny pieces. So I'm going to get two medium onions chopped up here. That's just the way I cut them up. It just seems better to me. Safer maybe. When you're cutting this way, make sure you curl your finger and thumbs back in because they don't taste anywhere near as good as that burger in that stroganoff. Here's one. Let me get both these cut up and I'm going to dump them in this pan. All right, we got our cast iron pan on medium high heat. Got a half a stick of butter in there. We're going to dump in our onions. And we're just going to cook these on medium to medium high heat and really let them soften a little bit because they take a little longer than the mushrooms. So until I get these ready to throw the mushrooms in, I'll be right back with you. All right, these onions are looking terrific. And I just turn it up to high because I'm getting ready to add my mushrooms and these other two quarter sticks of that stick of butter. So now we've got one whole stick in there. Half of it went in 
to work on our onions. And the reason I'm using so much butter is I, I just love sauteing mushrooms with lots and lots of butter in there. All right, it's time to add the mushrooms. I started putting them in here before I turned the camera on. So I will tell you that I got one of these little containers at the store full of mushrooms, slice it all up. And I took one of these two cup measuring cups and it was heaping full of mushrooms. But they cook down so much that that's what you need. You need about two and a half cups or even three cups of sliced mushrooms in here. As long as we got our onions nice and soft and our mushrooms are starting to do the right thing. Let's hit it with just a little bit of salt and pepper. I always like to season everything a little bit because I'm going to pull this out and put it in a bowl when it's ready and then we're going to make our real delicious base that you're going to see all kinds of neat little ingredients. You're going to love this ground beef stroganoff. And I was telling Sheila, I said, is that ground beef stroganoff or is it ground beef stroganoff or should it have an extra beef in there? Should it be ground beef beef stroganoff? I don't know. What do you think, Sheila? Well, where's the beef? <laughs> I don't think she's that little gal that stood at the counter at Wendy's and said, where's the beef? But she might be. I gotta look her over. I don't know. I'll check her out later here. All right, let's get these nice and sauteed up. So we've got a full stick of butter in. We put a half a stick in to start with our two medium onions diced. Got them nice and soft on medium heat. And then we turned the heat up to high and threw our mushrooms in here. And I'll keep a close eye on this in case we need to turn it down. And we threw in the other half a stick of butter. And don't they look just delicious. These need to be poured out over the top of a ribeye steak with some garlic toast. And uh, that's a whole other show. But let's get these nice and soft. And then I'm going to move them over to this bowl here. Turned off my pan. Now I'm going to transfer these over to this bowl and I'm not going to drain them because whatever butter goes along with them is going back into the recipe later on. In fact I'm not even going to take the butter out of this pan. That whole stick is going to end up in the recipe one way or the other. We did our burger proud. We got that browned up nice. We got our mushrooms and onions dripping in butter cooked up nice. Now we're going to start our base over here that all that's going back in in just a second. First of all, I'm going to put in a can of beef consomme. What is that? I have no idea, but it goes in this recipe. What it is, it's like a real dense beef broth, and we're not going to dilute it with water. And you'll find this in the Campbell soup aisle, and it just says beef consomme. Let me open this, get the camera back over here, and start this delicious sauce. All right, I turned my burner back on here open this can. See that? It's just real thick beef broth. That's all that is. When you go ask somebody in the store, where's your beef consomme? They'll look at you like you got a third eye. They have no idea what it is. That's probably because I didn't know what it was either. But it's like a real thick beef broth or beef stock. And I guess you could get by with beef stock as well. But this smells so fantastic and it's so dense. I would really advise that you use this. And this is a, uh, looks like a 10 and a half ounce can. But whatever that normal size can is by Campbell Soup, that's what you want to use. Now, we also want to put all-purpose flour is in this cup. One-third of a cup and one-third of a cup of water. We just made a slurry. Now, when you put in one-third of a cup of flour and one-third of a cup of water, it's almost kind of like a paste. Add a little more water just so it gets to this real thick liquid that you can pour out of there. You might have to add just a little bit more water so it isn't like a paste. Now there is one thing I should have done is I should have poured the slurry in real slow as I was mixing it, but I kind of dumped it all in so I had to cook it for a while to get it nice and smooth. But now we're going to add a teaspoon of garlic, minced garlic in here, and we're also going to add one and a half cups of sour cream. Oh, this is the good stuff. And I got to tell you lucky people out there, Sheila made a special trip to the store to get sour cream 
and parsley to go on top our recipe when it's done. Thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. A bit of sour cream in there, one and a half cups. And this next ingredient is up to you how much you want to put in there. The recipe calls, mm, I know that tastes good. The recipe calls for two tablespoons of tomato paste. But I'm going to put in one tablespoon first and see what it looks like. I'm just going to put in one tablespoon. I'm going to turn my heat back up a little bit, maybe to medium high to help dissolve that. That does taste good. See, that gives it just a little bit of reddish color. Now, I don't want a real red sauce, I want a creamy sauce that's more white than it is red. So there's one tablespoon of tomato paste. Let me see if I got a sample spoon. There it is. Mm. Wow. That is really, really good. But it does need a touch of salt. I'm just going to add a little at a time. So salt and pepper to taste, as they say in just about every recipe. In fact, I'm going to give that a little pepper as well. Just a little bit. Now she's starting to come back to a boil, and I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to put it back on medium again, bring the heat down, but that's really looking good. And I'm going to stop with that. I'm going to put in one tablespoon of tomato paste. Now you can put two in, that's totally up to you. And now, let's add our mushrooms back in. <laughs> it's looking so good. switch back over to my my little paddle here and kind of fold this stuff in because I'm now going to put in this burger along with it our two pounds of ground beef and do we have a wonderful concoction here or what it looks really good it does doesn't it, it does. Now, once we get this all incorporated, as my Uncle Bob used to say, you're going to need something to prop that up on. So I got a bag, a one-pound bag, of extra-wide egg noodles. And instead of dragging a big pot in here and boiling it and doing all that stuff, I got it on the stove boiling right now. Four quarts of water in a kind of a Dutch oven. And I'm going to put this in along with one teaspoon of salt. You can use a half a teaspoon of salt if you want. And I'm going to boil it until these noodles are tender. Then I'm going to bring them back. After I drain the noodles, I'm going to put a little bit of virgin olive oil in the noodles so they don't stick together. Just about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of olive oil. And I'll show you that when I get the noodles back in here. But right now, I'm going to let all this sit here and I'm going to turn this way down on low until my noodles are done. See you in about 10 minutes. All right, we'll keep this on low and put these noodles in the water. Sheila, you got the pot boiling? Nope. Okay, let me go in there and turn it on, and we'll be back in a little bit. All right, that was easy. Only about five minutes on the stove in boiling water because these little things are so thin. They're only about half the thickness of spaghetti, so they are so tender delicious. I put a little bit of olive oil, about a teaspoon in here, so they wouldn't stick together. We're going to serve this family style, so come on over here and let's dish it up. All right, our noodles are looking good. I just turned this off. It was on low and I turned it back on medium and it kind of started to boil a little bit, so it's hot and ready to go. We got one lone little noodle in the bottom of our dish. So we're just going to dump this whole one pound bag in there, which is going to be just perfect. Did any fly over the other side, Sheila? No. All right, looking good. 
You know me, I hate it if there's a couple little leftover guys in there. They got to join the party. Now, it's time for this stuff right here. And I got to tell you, I already tasted it. It is absolutely fantastic. And just so I don't spill, let me see that little bowl right there, Sheila. I just don't want to spill. So I'll make sure. See, that would have fell on the table. I'm just kind of using that as my little protective bowl. Ground beef stroganoff. And with all that stuff in there, the mushrooms and the onions and the sour cream and that tomato paste and all of our seasoning, it tastes absolutely outstanding. And I'm going to push it so I can see just a little bit of my noodles all the way around the edge. And like I said, we're going to serve this family style. Did a little bit go over the front there, Sheila? No, it looks good. All right. I thought I seen a little chunk. That's very unusual because something always flies out of the bowl when I'm dishing it up. Oh, yes, there's a little bit right there. There is? Yeah. Can you, can you get it? Take your finger and get it out of there? Yes. All right. Good job. And look at here. Man, there's even some left over here in the pot. Man, you can prop this stuff up on toast tomorrow or whatever you want to do. Let me get some dirty dishes out of the way here. And let me put a big dollop of sour cream right in the middle. That looks so pretty. What do you think, Sheila? That's a pretty. That's your line. Now... Here is that parsley that Sheila went all the way to the store to get so we didn't use parsley out of the jar. We're taking parsley, fresh chopped, and sprinkling it on top. How's that look? Better, Sheila? Even better. It does look good, don't it? Keep our parsley kind of up here on our stroganoff mixture. Let me move this out of the way, this other cooker. Then I'm going to sample this stuff. Thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. I'm saying thank you because she took a picture of this to use as the thumbnail. Now I can mess it up a little bit. i got to try some of this. Mm. Boy, that doesn't need anything. It's perfect pepper, perfect salt, perfect seasoning. Everything is fantastic. And what is it? It's the next time hamburger goes on sale, you can make beef stroganoff, ground beef stroganoff. What do you think, Sheila? It really looks good. It is delicious. Now it's time to go get a couple of separate bowls for me and her, big spoon, little spoon, and we're going to have us lunch. Well, as you see, I have two red bowls here, a big spoon for me, a little baby spoon for that little baby girl right over there. And why I dish this up, I want to say thanks for watching our channel. We hope you subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Subscribing is easy. At the end of this video, a little shotgun red's face will pop up over here. You click on it and subscribe. Next to it is a bell. If you click on that, then you'll be notified every time we come out with a new recipe, like these recipes over here that I'm going to put a little playlist that you can click on it. And is this the most <laughs> delicious? Man, I was into some of these mushrooms while she moved the camera. It is absolutely fantastic. Is this the most delicious ground beef, beef stroganoff you ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. There's the big spoon, there's the little spoon, and there's the girl that does a great job on the camera. Thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. Don't forget to check out our website at shotgunred.com for all kinds of neat stuff, including our fish breading, which is now available. But you don't have to go to a website to get any of this recipe. It's right under the video. We do that for you because you're nice enough to subscribe and watch it. And that way, when you check back, it'll be right there for you to copy and paste and cook it up for your family. Bye-bye for now. It's time for lunch. Here we go, Sheila.